Hi guys, in today's video I would like to show you this very useful tool that I found on the internet. It is called Flow and this tool helps you to record and analyze your Java code. And let's say you have a more complicated app such as Neural Network and you want to know uh, how many functions are called, uh, how packages and classes interact uh, with each other when you, for example, click on a button and you want to record some event and then you can analyze it with this tool. So this tool is able to show you the structure of the program on package level, on class level or on method level where you can see all the functions that were called and uh, on the bottom you can see the recorded history and this way you can see all the events that happened from the start of the recording to the end and as you can see uh, this app has a web browser uh, interface so it is pretty user friendly and it acts like a server so you can also access it on your LAN or on your local area network. So in this video I would like to show you where to get it and how to make it work. Let's get started. So in order to get this app you need to go to find the flow.io and click on get started then click try flow standalone version I've been trying to make work uh, this plugin for IntelliJ but unfortunately it uh, didn't work and I've been trying this uh, to make it work on three individual machines so uh, I decided to use this uh, standalone version so click on it and download this so when your downloading is finished you can go to your download folder and you can open your zip and you can extract it anywhere you want but I recommend you to put it somewhere where you don't have any spaces in your path it's because uh, I also recommend you to put there this batch file but first uh, let me show you what's the content uh, of this uh, zip file there's this jar and a readme and I've extracted it uh, in here so this readme just tells you uh, which command to use uh, in your uh, command line uh, in order to uh, launch this but technically uh, you also can launch this uh, jar file just by double clicking on it but you won't see any window at all any console window that's why they recommend you to run this this way and uh, the best way to make it easy to run is to make this uh, batch file you can make a new batch file just like this by right clicking and making a new text document but it can be named for example run.bat and it's done but uh, in here you need to edit it and uh, put there this command uh, with the proper name of this jar file so in the end let me just delete it because I already done it and it should look like this so as you can see it's the same uh, jar file and now uh, I've also uh, placed uh, a shortcut uh, on the desktop it's a shortcut shortcut for this uh, batch file so when I double click on this I also have a nice icon 
and I basically download it uh, an extra icon and edit it uh, into this shortcut. So you can change icon and I've added this one icon that I've downloaded from the internet. So that's how you get this uh, nice and cool console window. And now as you can see in here you have like a tiny manual that uh, shows you that you need to put this command uh, into your Java virtual machine options and uh, don't be fooled uh, because this is this ending is just an example of your package so let's say uh, let's run an IntelliJ so this is how you should start your ID as usual and then you can go here and click edit configurations and in here I've placed this command so it goes like this and uh, on top of that I've uh, placed this uh, command that uh, shows that I want to include this package fit forward neural network and you can add there more and more packages if you have in your project because uh, one project can have multiple packages so then you can include it like this like include this first package comma second package comma another package etc and in case you want to start recording your uh, applica application from the beginning then you can just uh, copy paste this command and each uh, individual command should be uh, separated uh, with space so if you want you can put this command and it will start of as soon as you launch your application so I don't need it but this way oh, you can make it work then you can launch your application and after that you can for example go to your web browser and go to your local host port 7575 that's where it is running and uh, as you can remember from the beginning of this tutorial I had uh, one event recorded so you can rename your all the recordings otherwise all of them will be called uh, unknown so let's say it is feed forward neural network test one and this name should be without spaces so this is it and let's say you can hit this record button and this only records events so let's say I try to run this app boom it did something and now I can stop this so I this is a new recording and I can explore it so this way you can analyze your new recording and you can use your uh, scroll button or your mouse on your mouse and you can zoom in and zoom out all the history that happened so this is basically it and let me show you for example another project let's say this old project uh, 3d chart and you can also 
I've placed here multiple packages, like first package is com.victorvanyo, comma, and another package. As you can see in this project, I have two packages. This is the first one, and this is the second one. And I've also added there this uh, auto start uh, argument, so which helps me to start the recording from the beginning. So I can delete this one recording. Yes. And now I can just run this new application. And now it is being recorded. So this is it. I can rotate this object, generate new chart, resize it, and for example, close it. Okay, something new has been recorded. There have been 20,000 calls. And now I can explore what just happened. So, uh, as you can see, I have these uh, multiple packages, com.victorvana and uh, org, jzy, 3d, java, fx. And I can switch it to class view and to method view. And as I zoom in or zoom out this whole thing, I can see more and more functions. So this is way better than debugging because when you debug and you pause your program, you just see only the the time when you post your uh, program but this tool helps you to record the whole history so that's why i think it's really convenient and uh, let's move to another path to another part of this video where i would like to show you uh, how you can access this uh, server app on your local area network so you need to go to your windows defender or firewall advanced security settings you can just uh, go to control panel then click uh, system and security windows defender firewall and there are advanced settings and here you can see inbound rules and outbound rules and i've added there uh, this flow it should be even in here and on this uh, web page you can find ports and uh, it says that it uses these three ports so you can like add here new rule uh, click port I'm just adding uh, outbound rules and uh, this one is fine you can put here oh, not this one but these ports so I have to remove this end and this is fine and you can allow connection we don't need public and you can name it as you want but uh, i've done this before so i don't have to and uh, i've added it and named it as a flow uh, for inbound and outbound rules so now i am able to access this the same thing on another computer within my local area network so uh, in the next cut i'm going to show you how does it looks like so this is my recording studio and over here i have my old laptop in exploded view and on this one i've entered 
my IP of my regular laptop with uh, 7575 port which is the same port uh, that this server app runs on and when I click on explore I will get the same interface the same page uh, that I shown you on this computer on my regular computer so it is basically the same thing so that's all for today's video thank you for watching bye